morning, y'all. Good morning. How is everybody? Doing well. Yeah. Busy time of year. Yeah. Um, Pastor Eric, what, it looks like you're in your car. I am now. And I want to tell the boys and girls something. You never text and drive. What I'm doing is I press the record button and I'm going to keep my eyes on the road so that I can participate by talking, but I'm, I'm going to participate differently today since we're in the car. I want to be safe for myself, but also other people on the road. So never mm -hmm. text and drive. And, um, and I'm going to pay attention to the road. Yeah. So if Pastor Eric's not looking at the camera, don't take it personally. He's got more important things to watch right now. There we go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think you passed along the stories that we have today. Um, so it's, again, Pastor Eric is driving. He's not going to be reading. Um, and I believe our first story is about two people named Ruth and Boaz today. I love that story. I like that story of Ruth. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. Yeah. So shall we just go ahead and uh, jump in? Yeah, Let's absolutely. It. Kick it off. Yeah. So this is in your Spark Bible. Um, so if you don't have one, we can always get you one. And this is the story of Ruth and Boaz. So Ruth's over this direction and then Boaz is up on the rock, it looks like. So it says, uh, Ruth and Naomi were very, very poor. They didn't have any money to buy food to eat. Ruth said to Naomi, I'm going to go to the field nearby to pick up some of the leftover grain so we can make some bread to eat. Hopefully, I'll meet someone who can help us. So she's picking up all the leftovers over there. In the field, Ruth walked behind the people who were harvesting the grain and picked up the leftovers for herself and Naomi. In the evening, she would grind the grain into flour and use it to make bread so they could eat. Ruth was a very hard worker. Ruth didn't know it, but she had picked a field that belonged to a rich man named Boaz. So Boaz is up there. Boaz was also one of Naomi's relatives. When Boaz saw Ruth, he asked, who is that young woman picking up the leftovers? The servant who was in charge of all the workers in the field said, oh, her? She isn't from here. She came with Naomi and asked if she could have some of the leftovers. She is a hard worker. When Boaz met Ruth, he told her he could, she could stay in his field and work with the other women. If you get tired or thirsty, he said, please stop and rest and have a drink of water. Ruth was very grateful. Why are you being so nice to me? She asked shyly. Boaz said, I've heard how hard you work and how kind you have been to Naomi. I think God must be very proud of you and I would like to help you. Boaz told his workers to be very kind to Ruth and to let her take all the grain that she wanted for herself and Naomi. And that is a little bit of the story of Ruth and Boaz. So what do y'all think? That's pretty incredible. It is. I tell you, the part I like about the story, too, is the part with Naomi. Will you remind everybody who Naomi is? Naomi is Ruth's mother-in-law so Naomi's not Ruth's mom but Naomi was the mom to Ruth's husband so Ruth was married and sadly Ruth's husband died and that was really hard for Ruth to lose her husband and really hard I think for that's Naomi to lose her son but Ruth did not leave Naomi I mean, they weren't related really, except through that, that one person, that one man, but Ruth stayed with Naomi. You know what? That's the part I like about this story. It's such, it's a story about love. People mm -hmm. are caring for each other. Naomi is caring for Ruth. Ruth is caring for Naomi and Boaz is caring for them. But mm -hmm. it's a, it's a story about how, um, how love connects us. And, keep, mm -hmm. and unites us and brings us together. I really like that part of this of this story. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, eventually, uh, Ruth and Boaz um, end up. It, it doesn't say it in this, but end up falling in love and um, getting married. So, 
kind of cool. Yeah. It's a neat story. It's a neat story about, and, and it also comes at the right time of the Bible because some of it's, it's placed in there in, among, among other stories that are, um, aren't so happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think Boaz did a good thing too, in that letting um, Naomi go through or letting Ruth go through his field and take some grain, you know, just what she needed. He could have said, ah, oh, get her out of my field. She doesn't, this this is my grain you know keep her away from my field but he didn't do that he recognized um that he could share some of the grain so that um naomi and ruth could have something to eat too so he was really good for that good. so the the key verse in this um is uh ruth 4 14 out of the the big bible and it said um then the women said to naomi Blessed to be the Lord who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. So that's a pretty big verse, too. Could you say it one more time? Yeah, it says, Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. That's pretty, pretty big. One. It's a it is another, we go back to that theme of love. And then it finally shows God's love for us. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a neat part at the end of that. I think the last sentence of the book of Ruth points toward this time of the year. It points toward Advent and Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, do you, is it, do you have a close by you can read that very last part, Pastor Rebecca? Yeah. So it says, da, 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 da. um, so the whole little section says, um, so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife and uh, they she bore a son. And then you have the key verse. Then the women said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without next of kin. And may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on in her bosom and became his nurse. The woman of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the descendants of Perez. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron of Ram, Ram of Amadadab, Amadadab of Nashon, Nashon of Salmon, Semon of Boaz, Boaz of Obed, Obed of Jesse, and Jesse of David. Ah, and then we get very close to the baby Jesus. Mm -hmm, because Jesus yes. is a descendant of David. Yes, mm -hmm. it's pointing closer and closer and closer to uh, Advent and Christmas. So I, I like the way it ends. Yeah, yeah, they have a baby and eventually that goes down the line to Jesus, which is cool. All right, so that was a cool Old Testament reading. And then we have, let's see, what is it? The, the New Testament reading, let me see if I can find it. Might have to, here we go, is the Good Samaritan, correct? Oh, that's a good story. I think everybody knows this one. Okay. I, but I need to be reminded though, I, what, what's it about again? All right, well, Luckily, it's in the Spark Bible, so why don't we just read it and let you um, oh, yeah, catch up. All right, so the Good Samaritan. A clever man who thought he knew all the rules for living God's way asked Jesus a question. I think that's him there. He wanted to see if he could trick Jesus into giving the wrong answer. Teacher, he said, what must I do to live forever with God? And Jesus asked another question. What do the commandments say? The man answered, The commandments say you should love God with everything you have, and you should love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Jesus replied, That's the right answer. Live like this and you'll live with God forever. So Jesus, the man continued, who's my neighbor? Jesus answered the question with a story. A man was traveling down a scary and rocky road all by himself. All of a sudden, a group of men jumped out 
They stole his money and hurt him, leaving him by the side of the road. He moaned and groaned in pain. He couldn't get up. So then, a little while later, a priest was going down the road. He saw the hurt man and passed by him on the opposite side of the road. Later, another man came along and passed on the other side of the road too. When a Samaritan came along and saw that the man was hurt, he stopped to help him. And that's right there. A tear ran down the Samaritan's cheek as he bent down to help the hurt man. He put bandages on the man's cuts. The Samaritan huffed and puffed as he tried to lift the man onto his donkey. He took the man to the nearest inn and put him in a room. He took care of him for the rest of that day. The next day, the Samaritan had to leave for a few days. He paid the innkeeper to take care of the hurt man. The Samaritan promised to return and pay the innkeeper any more money that was needed to care for the man. He wanted the hurt man to get better. After Jesus finished the story, he asked the clever man, which of these three men was the neighbor to the man who was hurt? The man replied, the one who stopped to help him. Jesus said, Jesus told him, God wants us to help everyone. People of every size, shape, and color, and from every country are important to God. Now go and be like the Samaritan and help everyone who needs help. All right. So what are y'all's thoughts on that? It's another story about caring for each other, just like um, Ruth's story. And what Guys, a time. I'm sorry. Okay. There, you go. there you go. You go. I was going to say, what a timely lesson for the Advent season. As I think the holidays, particularly the Christmas season, we see more um, goodwill and people come together in bigger ways. So it's just kind of cool to see that that lined up. Yeah. Oh. You know, I, one of the things that uh, Jesus does in his parables, and remember this, boys and girls, this is a parable of uh, Jesus teaching with stories. So one of the things that Jesus did with parables is he, he, he took what we thought we, what we expected, and he, and he switched it around. Mm -hmm. So we thought that the certain people would help, but they didn't. But then the one who did help, was the one that people thought wouldn't help because Samaritans, they, they were sort of uh, uh, skeptical of, of uh, Samaritans, but it was the Samaritan who turned out to be the helper. Mm -hmm. So Jesus teaches us by sometimes the ways that we things turn out when we don't expect them to. Right. I like that part. Right, because in Jesus's day, a Samaritan, you didn't call a Samaritan good or at least people other people didn't call a samaritan good in jesus's day because um the people that jesus uh talked to mainly they they looked down on samaritans now jesus did get out and teach about uh to other people but there were a lot of people who looked down on samaritans and thought they were like unclean or just shouldn't be around them um so the fact that jesus uh in this story has the Samaritan being the person who comes out and does the right thing and is good. Um, Jesus is trying to shake up people's minds a little bit and say, Hey, um, there are people that can do good who you might not expect um, that love and care can come from some surprising places. And, it, and, and I think kind of a way of saying to the crowd, Hey, if a Samaritan can do the right thing, what about you? No. And you know another lesson, another lesson that we can get in this, um, mm -hmm. get from this story is that if we read it carefully and we're honest with ourselves, then we could see that some days we're like every character in mm -hmm. this story. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we behave like the Good Samaritan. Sometimes we behave like the priest. Sometimes we behave like honestly like the bad guy, like the robber. So um, we all. Um, can see ourselves in this story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the key verse in this, it's uh, Luke 10, 27 and 28. Um, the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and, and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. 
Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. So all about love your neighbor. That's a good lesson for us anytime. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Love God and love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Feel like you can't go wrong with that. You can't. Mm -mm. Yeah. well that was a that was a good uh ksk and um we'll uh let pastor eric go so he can um continue on his way uh keep your eyes on the road okay. i will i will thank you yeah all right y'all have a great week all right see y'all bye, bye now